Hey everybody, welcome back to the Audio Cycling YouTube channel where today we're going to be taking a look at the Volta Algarve where we've got a lot of big guns arriving here to be honest with you and it is going to make it a little bit more difficult to create a balanced team when you've got Avonapool and Wildman Art in this race but speaking of which, Avonapool, 28 credits, George is still testing us with these expensive rider prices but at the moment they are proving to still be worth it i think at the moment we're uh, you know it's definitely been more worthwhile to take the most expensive rider than to not in the competition so far and i do think that avenapool considering that he won the figuera classic the other day by a convincing margin nobody was really close to him he is likely to win this race considering that there's two hilltop finishes and there's also a time trial if he wins all three of those or even if he came just like top three in one of those and won the other two he's gonna get 400 ish points and then the end of tour points that's like 700 plus some extra bits and bobs he's gonna get up near 800 which as a 28 credit rider is worthwhile so i think that avenapool is is worthwhile it's just whether you think that by taking him off you can kind of get in another rider who's kind of like a top five candidate and then you think that's going to balance out but that's up for you to decide i think at the moment i'm just going to stick with avenapool wow is an interesting one of course he punctured in the classica heian so don't take that result as gospel wow if he competes in the sprint and if he's climbing like we've known wow van art to do i think that he's going to be really good because he could contest realistically the two sprints the time trial likely the stage two uphill finish because it's usually a bit more of like a sprint i want to say uh, between climbers and then the, the last stage he'll be kind of be like hanging on but i do think that wow could be top 10 gc and he could definitely get like a multitude of top 10s here so i think that wow is a good choice but something is making me a little bit apprehensive about him i can't quite put my finger on it but maybe it's just because there's so many other visma lisa bike riders here who are also really good choices martinez has done well in this race in the past of course he's won it i just think that at 20 credits i just i i believe that somebody like del toro or pidcock who are four credits cheaper would be a better choice given that i don't know i just think they're four credits cheaper and i think they're probably all relatively similar as a time trialist although we haven't seen del toro really time trialing but i don't know martinez at 20 seems a little bit expensive so i'll probably avoid that but he'll he will still finish top 10 gc like there's no doubt in that Ganna was like 12 credits last year and now he's 18 he was good last year like he came second in gc but yeah 18 credits is just quite expensive but if you think that he's still worthwhile then not by all means go for him because it just depends if they're working for pidcock still i i, I don't really know but I'd, but Ganna was worth it last year but maybe at 18 credits is quite expensive this time round. del torres the interesting late edition he was added like yesterday uh he we of course we don't know what his time trial is like but if he's like anything like pagacha whose breakout performance was really at like the volta Algarve in like 2019 or whatever his time trial will be put him somewhere between like 10th and 20th so i think that del toro is definitely like a podium contender for this race maybe like a top five or certainly a top 10 so i think that he's quite an interesting one hershey i think will probably not that great as a choice considering that del toro has been added uh lander i think he'll just be a domestique don't pick lander for for all that you're worth do not pick him pidcock is a better choice considering that apparently he's been working on his time trialing he won the final stage last year but his time trialing wasn't that great so that's why he didn't finish too high up in gc but you really need these kind of okay time trialists uh yeah these okay time trialists to do well in stage two and stage five for hilltop finishes to be worthwhile so and there's a lot of competition for that like there's no guarantee that pidcock's gonna do like get two stage wins um it you know it might happen but you've got to kind of take that into consideration especially since you've got like higisa here who's another great puncher but he'll struggle in the time trial a rensman will do good in a time trial but he's not punchy enough probably to win the other stages especially since they've got pidcock here who will likely be their guy for that rui costa healy i think healy's likely the better choice of the two but i think that teo trumps them both because i think that teo is kind of fast in a finish 
He's got a good time trial on him. We saw that last year at the Giro. So I think that Teo's really good value at 12. I think he's probably my favourite 12 credit rider. There are a lot of them to go at. Kung, yeah, he'll do good in the TT, but outside of that, I don't really know. Sepp Kuss looked really good the other day at Class Kahear. He'll probably be top 10 GC, to be honest with you. I reckon he could be a bit of a surprise in this race if Wout ends up just not wanting to contest the hilltop finishes. Uh, Mayus and Tayson and Jeep. G never does well in anything outside of a Grand Tour, so that's an immediate no from me. The 12 credit sprinters, there's only two sprints here. So if they won both of these, then they're going to get like 300 points. And 12 credits is really not worthwhile when you've got guys like Teo who will also be getting the GC points and then the end of tour points on top of that. So Mayus and Tayson may not be worth it, especially since there are other sprinters who are cheaper. But I'd say that these two are, in theory, the fastest sprinters in the race given kind of recent history, especially Tayson who won the Tulifea Palma recently. 10 credit riders, there's loads. Bagioli, I think they'll be working for Teo, but that doesn't mean that Bagioli couldn't snag a stage win. Banut will be a domestique. Magnus Court did good in this race last year, but proved last year that he he couldn't win GC last year, and I don't think he'll do it this year. And he also kind of got a bit lucky in that there was that breakaway sprint which he won ahead of Ghana. Damar hasn't been looking fast, so probably not. I mean, going back to Court for a second, he'll be like top 15 GC, so that's fine. Um, he might win this stage two a pull finish like he did last year. Madwas has been looking strong recently, but he'll get let down in the TT. Meyerhoff has been looking super good recently, and I would like to pick him, but there's Trenton. And he was sprinting the other day at the Trofeo Palma, or no, it wasn't the Trofeo Palma. It was the one which Coy won. Trenton was sprinting. So that's why I'm a little bit cautious of Meyerhoff, because he is climbing well enough to be a top 20 candidate. And... The problem is that I don't know if he'll be sprinting out and out or whether he'll be Trenton. So that's why there's an air of caution over that. Shackman, I don't know what's happened to him. The Pyrenees winning Shackman isn't here anymore for some reason. Sheffield, cool for the TT, but outside of that, probably not. Tiller, no. Vandenberg, probably not fast enough in all honesty in the sprints. But he's on like a, I don't know, him and Damar, eh. Like, they could do well, they could not. Eight credit guys, you've got Askey as a sprinter for Group Palmer. There's also Mark Sorrow, but I honestly think that Askey's faster at the moment. Bissiger for the one sprint, I mean for the one TT. Boven's been looking good recently. You know, he was top 10 at the Mount Lofty stage, so he could very well contest stage two, and he'll probably contest the two sprints. So Boven's pretty good, actually. I think he's probably climbing well enough to maybe be a top 25 GC candidate. Uh, Breyat's been looking good, but they'll be working for Tayson, so it doesn't really matter. You've got very expensive assist point getters in James Knox and Catania. Had a hot, possibly, but I don't think he'll be climbing well enough. Legnesund is a cheeky outside bet for GC. Isn't that bad? Morgado on home ground is very tempting too. Scaroni has been looking good. He was top 10 in the Figuera Classic. But there's also Velasco, who was third in that race but whether Vel Velasco is interesting because he could contest the two hilltop finishes but he'll get let down in the TT so he might be a like top 20 candidate arguably my Milan Varda good choice but there's Wout there's Tratnik and there's also Kuss here so Varda let me down at down under so I'm kind of still recovering from that burn Edward Turns is a good sprinter for Lidl Trek which is why I think that Tayson and Mayus might be a little bit expensive because you can get somebody of fairly similar sprinting prowess in terms of turns and also in terms of Kasper Van Uden, who proved at the Alula Tour that he is really fast. He was beating Tim Merlier on that first stage, so I like Van Uden. I think he's probably my favourite eight-credit rider. Considering that in the two sprints he might be top five as an eight-credit rider, that's pretty good. So I think that Van Uden I do like. Six credit riders, Barbour as a like, C-tier sprinter, possibly. Uh, Bittner, if they decide to go with him over Van Uden. Uh, Jan Christen, he can kind of climb. He can cl kind of time trial as well. But with the addition of Del Toro, it seems less likely that he'll be an outside GC threat. There's also Bob Jungles, who I think will probably be a top 20 GC rider but he won't really get 
like top 10 results in the stages because I think that he's not really suited to any of them particularly. Rui Oliveira will be sprinting, I presume, for UAE Team Emirates. And considering that he was getting top 10s in the Alula Tour whilst leading out Milano, I think that's pretty good. So I think that Rui, Rui Oliveira is good. Eduard Prades is a good puncher. But there's so much good puncher talent in this race. I don't know whether he'll even be getting a look into the top 10 on the two mountain top, um, yeah, mountain top finishes, I'll call them. There's Tratnik is probably the best six credit rider. Considering that he his last two races that he's done this year, he finished third and second. He is in fantastic form. He's a decent time trialist. Tratnik is without a doubt the best six credit rider that you can be picking. Like hands down, if you're going with anybody else, you you're going a little bit insane. Four credit riders, Tobias Bayer has sometimes got involved with sprints, but they have Lars Boven here, so I, I doubt he'll get involved, but it's worth mentioning nonetheless. Hulagard has been climbing very good for a big man recently, but with Lechnesund and Magnus Court here, I doubt he will get that sort of freedom. Cluckers may do something, but probably not. But he's worth mentioning nonetheless, because he's a decent time trialist. He can climb okay on his day, so maybe he might be a top 25 GC. Virgilito is a decent climber, but he'll get let down in the TT. Honestly, very similar to Ruta del Sol, Van Huluva is probably your best shout. Just go for the assist points on Avonapool or whoever, you know, if you want to go with assist points on somebody else um, from the four credit bracket, then go for it. I just think the four credits is probably the safest place to go. This is my team at the moment. I'm not entirely satisfied with it. I think the addition of Avonapool and Van Aert does really limit the rest of my team. But this is kind of where it's at at the moment, and I'm more than willing to take recommendations in the comments section. And speaking of which, so be sure to go and check out the Ruta del Sol video as well, because I'm going to just upload both of those just at the same time, pretty much. And all that is left to say is to stay safe out there, and I'll see you in the next video. Salut!